Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse. This is the Bible Forum, and we're here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Uh, just for you, looking at life through a biblical lens. Tonight we're looking at words. Do words matter? Of course they do. Do you have your Bible with you? You say, well, I don't really carry my Bible with me. Well, you might have sat down to watch a Bible forum, and you might have had the Bible nearby, or you might uh, think perhaps, uh, you know, I should pay attention. Maybe you'll say, so. I don't know. Or maybe you go to church. Do you take your Bible with you? What, do, what is the Bible? The Bible is God's word to mankind. When theologians look at what the Bible is, they see it as something that is God-breathed, inspired. God superintending human authors in such a way that they, the authors, human authors, would use their own vocabulary and their own style and the context of their world to write down the concepts, the very words that God wants you and me to know. That's what the Bible is. And theologians know from thousands of years of study and comparison that this God-breathed word is without error. Not because they have proven that all of these things are true, because there's still things in the Bible men say, ah, now see, God was wrong. But in my very short lifespan, I can't keep track of the number of things men said was not true in the Bible and found out it was. No, if it's from God, who is errorless, who cannot sin, it, the Word of God, is without error. It is inerrant. It is also infallible. If God says this is going to happen, this is going to happen. It cannot fail. And if it's God's word, it's authoritative. It isn't just a suggestion. It isn't just a nice bunch of words. These are instructions that must be obeyed. How do we know all of this about the Bible? We know it is all of the above by its nature, by its veracity, its truthfulness, by its morality. The Bible's morality is far above any human morality. By its unity, all the pieces fit together, old and new. By its credibility, its believableness, by its reliability, 4,000 years of reliability. By its continuity. By its integrity. Consistency. By the influence that it has had over men and women and nations and events. And by its testimony. If you don't get the Bible right, then nothing else matters. It's why we have so many new versions of the Bible. We don't have new versions of the Bible for clarity. The King James Version of the Bible is still the most precise and accurate version on the market. We have new versions for diversity. 
John, uh, G Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen? No. The Greek reads, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Can you see the difference? I can be free in jail. I don't have to be set free. But I do have to be made free. The Greek in this context is actually a phrase. It's not an individual word. It's a concept. Meaning to liberate from something. To exempt you from something. To deliver. To make free. Set free is the contemporary way of saying it. But it's not accurate. It's not precise enough. I'm not so much being liberated from sin as, as I am being made free from its hold over me. Now, both of these words work if you're not all that interested in precise doctrine. If you're not interested in doctrine at all, because set free is going to disrupt another doctrine or two, or pieces thereof, and most of us don't care. Make free is far richer in what it communicates. It's also more accurate, reflecting the totality of what the Bible teaches in regard to salvation. So why do men change this? There's only one answer. They need to make substantial changes in anybody's written work in order to qualify for an ISBN, for a new identifying number. It has to be significantly different from the other one. Now, the King James Version is not copyrighted. You can do anything you want with it. But once that was changed and it was copyrighted, you couldn't just put out another book like that unless it had significant changes. So each of the Bibles that have been printed have had significant changes on one level or another. Another example is in Luke chapter 22. Who is Jesus speaking to in verses 31 and 32? I'll read them for you. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Can I tell you? If you don't have a King James Version of the Bible, you cannot answer this question. You will not know who Jesus is talking about. Behold, Satan hath desired to have who? You. Who's he talking to? Simon. So Satan wants to have Simon. No. Well, that's what it says. That's what it says in English. But in Elizabethan English, Shakespearean English, you is always plural. You, ye, your. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have all y'all, that he may sift all you all as wheat, the disciples. But I have prayed for thee, singular, Peter. And when thou, singular, Peter, are converted, strengthen thy brethren. Apparently, Peter and the other disciples were not yet converted. But it's this verse that elevates Peter to the first pope. But it's a confusion, isn't it? The devil didn't want just Peter. He wanted everybody. And the new Bible versions won't tell you. 
They're deceiving you. Huh? The reality is the very character of the Bible shouts God. It recognizes throughout the personality, the unity, and the triunity of God. It's a very consistent picture. It magnifies the holiness and the love of God. It accounts for humanity as the direct creation of God, made in his image, tripartite creatures. It accounts for man's immaterial soul, spirit, the breath of God. It accounts for the evil that men do as the result of the fall, the free revolt of Adam against the revealed will of God. It pictures sin as inexcusable and under the judgment of eternal punishment. It teaches the sovereign rule of God in the universe. It sets forth the provision of salvation in great detail along with the conditions whereby sinners may experience that salvation. It spells out God's purposes for Israel and the church. It predicts world development, socially, economically, politically, religiously. It details the culmination of all things relative to the second coming of Christ, the resurrections, the judgments, the millennial reign of Christ, the eternal state of things. Who but God could have conceived such things? Who but God could have reduced it to print, to writing, and what creativity, couching all of this in the life of one family of mankind. 15, 1,600 years in the making, 40 or more different authors, and there's no contradictions. There's only one doctrinal system. There's only one moral standard. There's only one plan of salvation, Old or New Testament. There's only one program for the ages. And consider the influence that this book has had on the world. It has produced the highest view of morals and conduct of any religious writings. It has spawned a tremendous legacy in art, architecture, literature, music, Christian writings, hymns, poetry, the fundamental laws of a great society called the United States of America, the highest moral standards, the abolition of slavery, women's rights, the family, all comes from the Bible. No other book comes close, and it doesn't even consider the prophecies. You do realize that no other religious book in the world does or ever has featured the prophetic word. Why not? Because no one other than the eternal God could produce it. It takes an eternal God, one who dwells all along the timeline in a grand present tense. Nothing ever occurs to the God of the Bible, in part because he's working out a plan. That's why you can trust him. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, let alone 20 years from now. But if you do what God says is the right thing to do, You're trusting him with that tomorrow. And you're allowing him to be responsible for it. And when you get 20 years down the road, you know what you're going to find? That God was already there. He is the eternal present tense God. He lives all along the timeline at once. You can trust this guy. If you want to.